popcorn. So welcome to everyone joining us online. And let's go ahead. So the great Dr. Falian <laughs> <laughs> on his way back to change the face of dermatology and dermatopathology in China will lead us off with this. I see a uh, very basic term is uh, a cancer license. Uh, oh, it's a uh, single file. I yeah. think about the metastatic or leukemia cutis. Yeah. So you have a busy dermis, single file, nuclear molding, very prominent. Let's see where our. Where is our pointer? Ah, I see the problem. Okay, there we go. So nuclear molding where they flatten off like boxcars and the things that tend to do that are leukemia cutis and metastatic, especially which metastasis characteristically does this? Breast. breast. And this was in fact metastatic breast. Given the length, mm -hmm. leukemia cutis doesn't tend to be quite so long chains of cells. Um, Metastatic breast would probably be at the top. So, um, busy, busy dermis differential in this case, single file cells, nuclear molding, fairly long arrays of cells, bringing breast cancer to the to the top in the differential. Tumor composed of fairly blue cells. Um, do they have pink cytoplasm as well? Yeah. Which would be unusual for the, you know, the Merkel type blue cell tumors. Don't have any cytoplasm visible. Whereas this definitely has pink cytoplasm. It just looked very blue at scan because your nuclear cytoplasmic ratio is very, very polar on the nuclear side. And then what are all these little white circles? Ducts. Yeah, ducts duct ducts differentiation. Ducts. So, uh, sweat gland tumor. Yeah, so sweat gland tumor that's up in the epidermis, hanging down from the epidermis, does not palisade. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful. So yeah. poor carcinoma, malignant acrospiroma, malignant hydradenoma, they're all the same thing, right? So poroma, acrospiroma, hydradenoma, all the same tumor, just different names. They hang down from the epidermis, typically connect to the epidermis. They have visible cytoplasm, they do not palisade, they have duct differentiation, and the best sign at scan that you're dealing with poro carcinoma is it's too many nuclei. Your nuclear cytoplasmic ratio is skewed towards nuclei. Not necessarily atypia, not necessarily mitosis. Too, too blue for a... Um, for a benign sweat gland tumor. Okay. And you can choose to pass or play. Mm -hmm. Either can way. I pass you can pass. Time? You can pass. There's no shame in that. Okay, so Hallie, what would be a blue tumor with red ducts? Um, sebaceous. Sebaceous. Mm -hmm. So blue tumor, red ducts, sebaceous. This one has horn cysts as well which could be a little confusing, right? But you can see in other areas that they clearly are red ducts. So blue tumor, red ducts, sebaceous, and in, in particular, which sebaceous? Are sebaceous <coughs> adenomas? So adenomas tend to be a little more differentiated usually. 
more like sebacioma or sebaceous carcinoma to be blue tumor red ducts. So blue tumor red ducts is usually sebacioma. If you don't see sebaceous at scan, that's the whole point, right? You recognize it as a blue tumor red duct. If you have to wait till you find sebaceous glands, you're not going to make the diagnosis, right? So blue tumor red ducts, um, sebacioma, and then you look a little closer because it could be sebaceous carcinoma, depending on the degree of atypia and mitosis. So this now is another very blue tumor. So is this blue tumor one with cytoplasm or there really is no cytoplasm, just really nuclei? Cytoplasm. So no cytoplasm, just nuclei. Do you have both dark and pale nuclei the way you would say in a spiratinoma or is it all the same cell throughout? It looks like all the same cell throughout. Yeah, it's always the second one. So all the same cell mm -hmm. throughout, right? Yeah. And they're a little smudgy, a little salt and pepper. Yeah, I mean, I'm worried about Merkel, so... And that would be a very good thing to be worried about. So high mitotic rate, mm -hmm. sheets of blue cells, so things like in a child, neuroblastoma, and you'd look for some of the squash carrot cells in a mm -hmm. neuroblastoma, um, small, small cell, cell lymphoma, cell. endocrine <coughs> carcinomas, um, and Merkel would be at top of the list, and so you'd do some immunostains, and this was indeed Merkel cell carcinoma. <laughs> this particular one, solid growth pa pattern, nothing trabecular about mm -hmm. the growth pattern, so your usual clue not being there. So oh, and dermal infiltrate with overlying <laughs> acanthosis, <laughs> name three dermal tumors that produce overlying acanthosis. Dermatophagromas, spits, and uh, granular cell. And this actually at scan could be any of the three, right? So yeah. it could be sort of a pale cell granular cell tumor, could be a DF or variant of DF. It could be a spit. So you want to look a little closer. Mm -hmm. You know, the key is going to be looking at those infiltrating cells now. You're sort of down to a differential of three categories based on the overlying acanthosis. Well done. And so we're going to look at much higher power. And at higher power, we've got, let's get ourselves into focus here. You've got cells that have a distinct, distinctive kind of cytoplasm, right? Where you've got a dustier <laughs> gray and then paler to the side. Um, well, I don't see granules and I don't see giant lysosomal bodies, but I do see a distinct two-tone cytoplasm, darker gray and then pinker. So spits absolutely can do that. And then something that's very closely related to dermatofibroma, histiocytoma, reticular histiocytic granuloma, which is really kind of in the DF spectrum and occasionally can give you acanthosis. So this one you'd want to stain and see are those melanocytes or are those histiocytes and in this case they were histiocytes so reticular histiocytoma. But you hone down very very nicely. Large specimen, bloody. Um, pretty well circumscribed nodules. And then the specimen itself. 
And let's look, what do you see within the nodules? Um, it looks like spindle cells. With and what's between the spindle cells? RBCs, you can think of like catfishing. And that's exactly what it is, so nodular chaos. Mm -hmm. So remember early patch chaos, staghorn dilated mm -hmm. lymphatic type vessels, occasional plasma cells. Mm -hmm. Patch chaos, busy busy dermis in a patchy fashion around every pre-existing structure. Tumor chaos, spindle cells with erythrocytes between them. Mm -hmm. They look nothing alike but they're three stages of the same tumor. So early patch chaos, staghorn lymphatic type vessels, plasma cells. Plaque KS, busy busy dermis, patchy fashion around every pre existing erector pili, vessel, mm -hmm. follicle <coughs> in the dermis, sometimes with promontory sign. And then tumor KS, spindle cells with erythrocytes between them. And if you look around, you see the dull pink bodies, which are mummified erythrocytes that have degenerated. And if there's any question, you can always do an HH3A, right? But you have to already basically know the diagnosis in order to know what stain to <coughs> Okay, Ahmed. So here we have a large dermal nodule with overlying acanthosis. Overlying acanthosis. Name three <laughs> dermal tumors that will give overlying acanthosis. Yes, a spitz and a granule cell tumor. And of mm. those three, what does this look most like? Um, probably DF. Probably DF. It's fibrous, right? Mm -hmm. What do we know about fibrous tumors? Tough. Yeah, they can be tough. <laughs> and the more fibrous <laughs> they are, the tougher they are. Um, but in this case, not so tough because you see the overlying acanthosis and it's a fibrous tumor. Dad jokes, the worse they are, the better <laughs> we like them. Right. Okay. So, a large chunk of tissue, it's clearer than some of the arms we've seen. So, how would you describe it? Do you think this okay. is epithelial or do you think this is soft tissue? Soft tissue. Soft tissue. And is it very fibrous or is it more mixoid? More mixoid. So what kind of mixoid soft tissue tumors do we know of? Um, so like a um, mucus cyst would not be soft yeah. tissue? Well, not, not strictly soft tissue, but things that are... Um, mixoid or mucinous, so mixoid neurofibromas, um, s spindle cell lipomas that are very mixoid, but I don't see any ropey collagen here, right? And that's always present in the spindle cell lipomas, so I pretty much rule that out. Um, but mixoid NF might still be in there, <coughs> cutaneous myxoma, um, angiomyxomas, fibromyxomas, anything with myxoma, um, if there's a tipia, you have um, myxofibrosarcoma, um, in young people in the extremities you have low-grade fibromyxoid sarcomas, all kinds of myxoid things. And this one is a myxoid DFSP. Looks nothing like a mature DFSP, right? So there are three variants of DFSP, just like there are three stages of Kaposi's, and you have to recognize all three, and they look nothing alike. So what does juvenile DFSP look like? Giant cell fibroblastoma, mm -hmm. right? It's a loose mixoid tumor, vascular-like spaces, multinucleated giant cells adjacent to those vascular-like spaces. Mature DFSP, storiform, basket weave, mixoid DFSP, a lot like a fibromyxoma or a mixoid um, neurofibroma. It loses its CD34 staining often, so you can't even rely on that. 
How do you make the diagnosis? Because it's associated with a mature DFSP or grew as a recurrence. Usually they're recurrent tumors at the site of a DFSP. DFSP being dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans. Okay. Sam, you can pass or play. <laughs> I'm going to pass. Okay. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> okay, Lindsay. All right. So it looks like there's um, a lot of crust on top um, in a dermal proliferation of almost like infundibular cystic. So you're saying pink strands, blue buds, like an infundibular cystic BCC, are infundibular cystic BCCs spiky and yeah. infiltrative? In a, not so much, right? So this is a little more infiltrative, a little more spiky, a little more high grade than yeah. infundibular cystic. So first question, is there any visible cytoplasm? Is there yes, any pink so around those blue? Yes. yes. So it's something that has cytoplasm. The only basal cells that fall into that are pinkest tumor and infundibular cystic. And this is pretty nasty and infiltrative, so probably basal cells pretty well out. Does it palisade or does it distinctly not palisade? It does not. It does not palisade. So then that brings up what group of tumors that has cytoplasm and distinctly does not palisade? Like maybe MAC or so acrospiroma? MAX, but MAX often palisade at the periphery, but the acrospiroma group, right, the poroma group, would this be a nice, tame, benign poroma? No. No. It's not. This would be a nasty, infiltrative porocarcinoma. So key, you don't see a lot of duct differentiation, but you see an infiltrative cutaneous tumor, spiky fibromyxoid tumor, distinctly does not palisade, but has pink cytoplasm. Okay, Mark, pass or play? Uh, I really want to play, I'm going to pass today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you will have plenty of chances. It's my time. Yes. Exophytic growth. And what what oh. broad category would you put it in? Epithelial or spindle cell fibrous? Spindle cell fibrous. Okay. And I see mm. pattern, board like. So a little bit like a sclerotic fibroma, but here you definitely have a concentric onion ring, right. not onion, onion ring, onion skin. skin. I've got onion, I'm hungry, so I've got onion <laughs> rings on my mind, but onion skin like fibrosis. So you're thinking sclerosing perineurioma. Sclerosing perineurioma, any stain that you might want? EMA. EMA was strongly positive, and you are correct. That was easy. Well done. So that onion skin pattern, because it's perineurium. What does perineurium do? It's fiber cells that wrap the outside. And in the perineurioma, it's just wrap, 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 so that you have onion skin-like fibrosis. So when you say falling apart, it's not holding co <coughs> together cohesively like an epithelial tumor. What's the distribution here? Sort of perivascular, and then they form sheets. So you're thinking rather than epithelial, rather than fibrous, you're thinking kind of what broad category? Like in the blood vessel. Yeah, um, 
well, blood associated, so probably hematopoietic, right? So this looks more like a lymphoma at scan. So you have cells that don't hold together in a syncytial fashion like an epithelial tumor. It's not a fibrous tumor. You have perivascular round blue cell infiltrates um, like an inflammatory infiltrate, but this is now forming sheets of cells. It is superficial and deep, but it's top heavy and sort of plaque-like towards the surface. If you were leaning towards something, would you be more on the B side or more on the T side? With that? That's a T pattern. B things are nodules or vertically oriented, linear, typically bottom heavy. T things tend to be top heavy and line up along the epidermis. And then you look at this one and let's see if we can, unfortunately we've got some mounting medium on the top there. Let's see if we can get some of that smudge off. We have lots and lots of large cells. So it's not a small hyperconvoluted cell. They're larger cells, vesicular nuclei, prominent nucleoli. Some of them looking a little Reed Sternbergy like. And so we get a CD30 and it's CD30 positive. So it's a CD30 positive lymphoproliferative disorder. But this one being so plaque-like along the surface, it's probably transformed MF. It's probably large cell degeneration of mycosis mm -hmm. for boys. Could that be ALCL as well with the CD30? Um, well, ALCL, that's why we say um, um, CD30 positive lipoproliferative disorder. Mm -hmm. But given the pattern that she, like pattern, so, this was sent in from the outside as a CD30 positive lymphoproliferative disorder, and at the time I said, based on the pattern, this is transformed MF, which is what it turned out to be, because it's a plaque that follows the surface. Right. And there were some hyperconvoluted um, small cells still in the mix with the, with the big cells. Okay. KS look to it. So you're saying KS look. Have some cracked. cracked yeah, spaces so what else gives you crack like spaces through the dermis with hyperchromatic cells? Angiosarcoma. Yeah. So KS is a form of angiosarcoma, but this is probably more like a classic old man bruise on the forehead type of angiosarcoma. Little fried eggs, so sheets and sheets. See how they're evenly spaced polka dots? Mm -hmm. Because they're like little fried eggs in sheets, and so. That was easy. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it is, is a big old mastocytoma. Yeah, kind of a steel blue tells you it's sulfated mucin, right? So sulfated, that's the color of sulfated mucin. That kind of gray blue, steel blue. Um, so that would be heparin or chondroitin sulfate, right? So cold. And so the chordoma. That's exactly what it is, is a chordoma. So, um, you know, your differential would be sort of chondrosarcoma, chordoma, um, if benign, mixed tumor of skin. 
but this is just sheets that go on and on forever of something that doesn't look so good has lots of chondroitin sulfate cartilaginous type of mucin has vacuolated physoliferous cells so that would put you into a chordoma paracordoma group chordomas are axial tumors commonly presacral um, axial tumors that have metastatic potential and paracordomas are myoepitheliomas. One end of that spectrum of myoepithelioma is mixed tumor of skin and pleomorphic adenoma of the salivary gland, and the other end is paracordoma, which looks just like a chordoma, but is all in the myoepithelial. The ones that are primary in skin tend to be paracordomas. They can be myoepitheliomas run the spectrum from benign to malignant, just as mixed tumors do. Um, but overall, the pericordomas, most are benign. Um, this is a met from a presacral cordoma, axial cordoma, true cordoma. So band-like infiltrate, and what's going on right above that infiltrate? Fibrosis. Papillodermal fibrosis, telling you this is something acute or something very, very, very chronic. So something very, very chronic, giving you papillodermal fibrosis. So you have a band-like infiltrate that was very, very, very chronic, and when the clinician biopsied this very, very, very chronic thing, did he take a little biopsy or a big, broad shave? So what prompts physicians to take big, broad shaves of very, very chronic dermatoses? Yeah, mycosis fungoides, right? So big, broad shaves on the face tend to be lending a malignant question. Big, broad shaves of a fibrotic chronic dermatosis, you were thinking MF, right? That's um, what prompts me to take big, broad shaves of something chronic. And then we're just looking to see, do you have epidermotropism? And do you have, within that fibrotic area, ropey, string-like, linguine-like collagen with lymphocytes lining up between it, and those lymphocytes are not round, right? Mm -hmm. Lymphocytes are supposed to be round. These are weird, mm -hmm. right? They're hyperchromatic. They're not round. They're lining up between ropey collagen and the papillary dermis. That's MF. which is mycosis fungoides, cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, most common type. Uh, so, actually, very good thought. So, red Vs of verruciform xanthoma always have neutrophils in them, okay. right? So, ward on fire, red Vs of verruciform xanthoma, always neutrophils. And this one, what's going on at the basal layer? Like there's an so, there's an interface dermatitis, and is it, is there squamatization with complete destruction of the basal layer, or is it vacuolar? So it's vacuolar interface with something that is atrophic or hypertrophic? Hypertrophic. Hypertrophic with a patchy lymphoid infiltrate. And what's going on at the DE junction right there? Fibrosis. Fibrosis or? Oh, oh, thickening of the basement. Thickening of the basement membrane. 
So you have follicular plugging, something hypertrophic, interface with patchy lymphoid infiltrate, and thickened basement membrane zone. What is this? Hypertrophic lupus. Well done. So there's mm -hmm. inflammation in the papillary dermis, and is it well defined? Not really, it's kind of patchy. Kind of patchy. Mm -hmm. And how about the dermis below that? Acellular or kind of busy busy? Uh, like farther down or where you're pointing? Like right where we're pointing, <laughs> which is it below. It still is busy. Still busy. Yeah. So still busy. And then there's some. What structure like that is that? Coil. So name. Some things that give lymphs in the eccrine coil. So lupus, um, like syphilis or Louis, um, like constriatus. Um, I think that's all I've got. Lymphoma. 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 Okay. okay. And of those, which one would give sort of a superficial band? Um, I mean, I was thinking um, lupus, but. So lupus could give, although it tends to be a little yeah. patchier, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, lymphoma MF yeah. could, right? Superficial band and then deep in the eccrine coil, although eccrine coil tends more to be a B <coughs> lymphoma rather than a T lymphoma <laughs> phenomenon. And then which other one did so you mention? Syphilis. Syphilis, <laughs> yeah. which is what this was. It's a little crusty. You've got maybe a little bit of neutrophilic scale crust. It's also both spongiotic and interface. Mm -hmm. If you have mixed patterns, what things do you think? Uh, drug viral syphilis. Drug viral syphilis, drug viral syphilis, drug viral syphilis, drug viral syphilis, mixed patterns, inflammatory. You think of drug viral and syphilis, drug viral and <laughs> syphilis. Mark, if you see mixed inflammatory patterns, what things do you think of? Drug viral and syphilis. <laughs> Your short term recall is intact. Um, other clues can be endothelial swelling, but here we've got lumens that are intact. Too much cytoplasm to the lymphs, not really seeing it here. Busy, busy interstitial dermis, yeah. um, mm -hmm. that's definitely present. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Olson. Yes. Lichen striatus would be more like lichenoid. At Actually, point. lichen striatus is not often not lichenoid. That's in the differential also. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, you know, lupus is in the differential, lichen striatus is in the differential, and syphilis is in the differential. Mm -hmm. And you want to make sure you think of all of them. Um, Dr. Elster, is that like, is that tertiary? Looks either like a gamma or what was? Secondary. You know, secondary. Okay. Secondary syphilis. Tertiary is granulomatous. Lots of tissue, and there is skin <laughs> overlying, <laughs> but we're kind of deep tissue. What's this intensely staining, amphiphilic but mostly red stuff? Fibrin. Fibrin. So you've got a core of fibrin with granulation tissue on either side. If that were a little thing on an ear, what would you say? CNH, chondrodermatitis nodularis chronica helicis. Mm -hmm. um, CNH, what's the pathophysiology? Just like trauma, kind of like pressure. Pressure. So it's the world's tiniest decubitus yeah. ulcer. Yeah. So if CNH is the world's tiniest decubitus ulcer, what's this? Mm -hmm. A decubitus <laughs> ulcer, right? Mm -hmm. looks, like, looks like CNH on steroids, right, in the deep tissue. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what it is. So maybe in the Paroma family, if Paroma family, are you thinking benign? Oh, it looks pretty nasty. Looks pretty nasty, pretty blue. Yeah, 
So that's certainly a good way to start. Um, the only thing is when you look at it, a lot of these cells are vacuolated. Mm -hmm. What other thing might you want to put in your differential? It's more of a sebaceous. Yeah. And this was sebaceous, in fact. Mm -hmm. So what things could you use to stain for sebaceous? Um, you can use like EMA also. So EMA is a very good one. Factor 13A, mm -hmm. stain sebaceous. Androgen receptor. Mm -hmm. Just think of all those greasy guys with their big sebaceous glands and open receptor stains. Okay, so surface skin was probably somewhere up here because muscle is down there. This is all the way into muscle, but characteristically into fat in these kind of parallel layer cake like lines and then a very coarse honeycomb like pattern into the fat. What are you thinking? Dr. Paniculitis? Um, well, if this is a tumor rather than inflammatory, what kind of tumor grows in parallel strata giving you single file lines of lipocytes and coarse honeycomb. DFSP. DFSP, and then what else has a growth pattern identical to DFSP? Diffuse NF. So diffuse neurofibroma has a growth pattern identical to DFSP, parallel strata, single file lipocytes, coarse honeycomb, diffuse NF, just like plexiform NF is defining tumor for von Recklinghausen's. And so this is a patient with von Reck's and a diffuse neurofibroma. So growth pattern just like DFSP, but this would be S100 positive, CD34 negative, and it's a disease-defining tumor for NF type 1. So it looks like fecal skin. Yep. Some acanthosis. <laughs> there is some <laughs> acanthosis, but you're on acral skin, <laughs> so you may want to take that a little bit with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. And um, then... What, so first off, what is the red ropey stuff? Um, thickened collagen. Collagen. And what is the bluish pale amphiphilic stuff? Uh, maybe something mucinous. Yeah, so do you know any superficial acral fibro myxomas? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess. That or like yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's called superficial acral fiber myxoma. Um, Chris Fletcher wants to call them all digital fiber myxomas, except you have a lot of extra digital digital fiber myxomas. Then, so superficial acral SAF still has kind of held sway as a name. We might skip that one. A little too soft tissue y. Mm -hmm. um, that one. Okay. What about this? This is um, a blue cell tumor. Blue cell tumor, and does it hold together like uh, Merkel? Or is there white space between the blue cells more like something hematopoietic? White space, more like hematopoietic. Okay, so this is more like lymphoma rather than epith you know, epithelial or Merkel or neuroblastoma, which would be solid sheets. These are little round things sitting on a little background of white, right, but forming big sheets or nodules. So it looks hematopoietic at scan. And we're going to look a little higher. And so at scan, to me, it's more towards the black rather than the gray end of the spectrum. Vertical and gray 
would be um, marginal zone lymphoma. Paler would be most of the follicle center lymphomas. Dark like this. I mean, you don't really know if it's vertical. All you know is a vertical punch was taken out of something, right? Um, dark like this could be something like mantle, could be something T cell. And so you stain it, and this is all CD8 T cells. Mm -hmm. And you have the, um, the acral, especially ear CD8 lymphomas, mm -hmm. which tend to be on the indolent side. You want to distinguish from <coughs> the aggressive cytotoxic T cell lymphomas, which are also CD8 positive, and the epidermotropic hypopigmented MF in kids, which is also CD8 positive. So you have a certain subset of CD8 lymphomas. The one that leaves the epidermis alone, doesn't kill it, and is in big nodules in acral sites, especially ears, tends to be a more indolent CD8 lymphoma. <coughs> But the, the key there would be at scan, you're seeing something that looks hematopoietic, right? And they're fairly black cells. They're not gray cells. They're not pale, germinal, fo follicle center. They don't look like a follicle center phenotype, right? They look like a T or a mantle type of cell that would be round and very, very dark. Oh, the thick were highly nice to make me single. Mm. Highly nice vasculopathy. Yeah, collagenous, collagenous vasculopathy. Yeah. So collagenous vasculopathy, what are they going to look like clinically? Radiform purpura. Uh, not radiform purpura so much as it looks like a generalized phalangectasia. You know, often, uh, you know, brownish, almost black. I think you've seen patients at Grand Rounds, or are we past the point where you've seen them? Some of you may have seen some of our patients in clinic that we're doing laser on. Um, yeah, so collagenous vasculopathy um, either is purely skin, which is the majority, or the same thing's going on in your brain, in which case you're a real mess with strokes and other things. Um, most of the people we see is just in skin. Let's see. This is a pretty deep infiltrative tumor. It doesn't look like it's connected to the epidermis. Okay. At scan, I was almost thinking of melanocytes, but I don't. Um, so they, they tend to form aggregates around white spaces. Like there's a, like there's a duct in many of those asini. Or aquaspiroma. Well, if it's primary in skin, something acrosyringeal, this looks pretty ugly, right? Does it connect to the epidermis? No. No, this is a nodule down in the dermis. So... The metastatic. Yeah, metastatic, and is it more squamous or more adeno? More adeno. So it's more adeno. So what kind of stains would you want to do for a metastatic adeno? What's a good starting point? Mm. 7 and 20. Mm -hmm. 7 tends to be above, above diaphragm, 20 tends to be below diaphragm, right? So this was a 7 <laughs> positive, which, um, you know, breast would be your most common CD7 positive. But they tend to be above the <coughs> diaphragm tumors, CD20 tend to be below the diaphragm tumors. Big cord. 
cornoid lamella. Yeah. One cornoid lamella? Two, three. A million cornoid <laughs> lamellae. So when you have a million cornoid lamellae in something in a blastoid distribution, you're probably dealing with... Um, yeah, the type of poro keratosis. Yeah, linear... Well, tychotropica can do that around the butt, and then linear poro keratosis can also do that. So um, li linear poor keratosis is a loss of heterozygosity, so the risk of squame is very, very high in those. Um, and then um, poor tychotropica, kind of grayish brown plaques on your backside can look similar. Off the so some of the thing the hanging the down from the epidermis, does it have cytoplasm? It does. Does it palisade? Um, not particularly well. No. Nope. So cytoplasm it does, palisade it don't. Ducts. Ducts. So is this, I mean they're not red ducts, so maybe just acrospiroma. Yeah, something in the acrospiroma poroma group. Very good. So the fat is very high, telling you that the skin is atrophic. Yeah, and you can see how high the sweat glands are, so the secretory portion. So this is something very atrophic. This is a frontal hairline. Where's the hair? Yeah, so this is an alopecia of the frontal hairline with pronounced atrophy, probably FFA, FFA frontal fibrosing alopecia. Well done. One more time. <laughs> that was easy. You know what we really should do for the graduating fellows is yes. get them their own easy one. button yeah. to <laughs> take with them. Right. So vascular tumor, or what if these are epithelial? These long, clear tubules are epithelial with all that bloody background. Um, so, big round ball, pale, clear tubules, bloody background, okay, so. renal, metastatic <coughs> renal carcinoma. So, very bloody background, elongated tubules of usually clear glycogenated cells. In some areas so they're lining up. So you have epithelial islands and you also have lining up and this is probably breast. breast. Correct. Plugging. See those blue cells? Looks like sort of hypergranulosis that's accentuated like that. A little blue yeah. around the nuclei and rings. Mm -hmm. That's a clue to acanthalytic dyskeratosis. 
Okay. It's not quite there. That's what happens right before a canthletic dyskeratosis. Clue that this is all Grover's. Yep, they're melanocytes. So, in terms of what we can see of the lesion, does it end in single cells or end in a nest? Um, it looks like it ends in a nest. Ends in a nest. Kind of looks spitzy. Kind of looks spitzy in that there's hyperkeratosis, hypergranulosis, mm -hmm. spiky pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia, clefting. So it looks kind of spitzy. So it's either going to be a spitzoid melanoma or a benign spitz nevus. Which one ends abruptly in a nest? Benign spitz nevus. What are these dull pink things here in the epidermis? Pagetone scabby? Or camino bodies. Oh, okay. Right. So spitz, done from scan. Someone pass her the easy button. Yes. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> Yeah, it sort of has that sclerotic fibroma look um, because it is a, <laughs> <laughs> a sclerotic fibroma. Um, they sometimes overlap with pleomorphic fibroma. This one has those hyperchromatic radiation fibroblasts like mm -hmm. nuclei of a pleomorphic fibroma, but it definitely has that starry, starry night um, collagen pattern of a sclerotic fibroma. So what syndrome might you want to look for? Cowden's. Mm -hmm. And then what do people with Cowden's get? Um, thyroid carcinoma. Thyroid, but what's the more common than thyroid? Breast. Breast. Mm -hmm. And it's usually aggressive or not aggressive? Breast pretty aggressive. Very aggressive. Yeah. So they get all sorts of tumors. They get gut polyposis, mm -hmm. mucosal cobblestoning, um, and they need um, prophylactic bilateral mastectomy. Mm -hmm not hard to convince them they need it because mom died of cancer, aunt died of cancer, grandma died of cancer, everybody died of cancer. Usually young, usually very aggressive. Let's see. Oops. We're going to have to Something grab to that on. before we run over and pulverize it. Okay. So we'll get that at the end. Okay. Up here. Yeah, oh, oh, you already got it. Good for you. Well done. <laughs> okay, put it in the broad category. Uh, melanocytic. Melanocytic. Okay, and on what part of the body? Acral skin. Okay, is the junction um, easy to interpret or is it giving you a headache? Headache. <laughs> okay, so look at the corneum. Is it all over the place, or do you have nice columns? I have nice columns. And what do the columns correspond to? The uh, osteoopening. The furrows, furrows of the dermatoglyphs, right? So this is? A benign acral. Benign nevus, because ridges are risky and furrows are fine, right? And sometimes the DE junction can be giving you a headache. Look up at the corneum on the acral. Mm -hmm. If they're nice, tight columns and they're all in the furrows, you're looking at a benign nevus. Mm -hmm. And with that, we're right on the dot. Well done. So Thank we you. are going to finish our.